Well, from scientists, engineers to mathematicians, today we honor and celebrate the women who broke through the gender barrier to make strides in the STEM field. February 11th marks International Day of Women and Girls in Science. And one woman that accomplished quite a feat in the coding realm is our tech mm -hmm. expert and our dear friend, Katie Lindenall. She joins us in studio to talk about her journey. All right, so let's just start at the beginning. At what yes. age did you know that you wanted to get into a you know, science and technology field? Oh my goodness, I actually started coding when I was about 12, 13 years old, which I say that now, and my niece, she's 11, and she's like lapping me, so I always, we've talked about this before. It's, yeah. It was such a cool way to experience it at such a young age, to know that I wanted to be involved in technology. And at that time, it really wasn't as trendy yeah, or as were you exposed exactly. to this? Yeah. Like, how did you get no. into coding? How did this come about? And I think that's so key, you know, we had a, an old archaic dinosaur computer, yeah. but I, you know, discovered software and the behind the scenes of the hardware, and I was like, wow, this is like a whole other world. I became fascinated with it. Nowadays, I think it's more, you're exposed to robotics, and I yeah. mean, really cool interactive uh, coding opportunities, and you get to see what people at NASA are doing. So if I had the opportunities the kids have now, I think I would have been even more in love with it, but yeah. it was exciting. Did well, you ever so did you ever think that this isn't something I should do as a girl, and how'd you get past that? I was typically the only female in all of my classes. I got my networking certs while I was still in high school, a program that was very new. Again, I'm dating myself, but when I went to university, I went to the Rochester Institute of Technology. I was the only girl in all of my classes, and I said, like, you know, you take your differences and you use them as opportunities and you get to stand out. And I think that was really unique, but I think now more than ever, we're saying encouraging girls. We're finding that if girls are not involved in STEM by middle school, they're typically checked out, which is a really scary statistic. So getting them more exposure to and more hands-on and better understanding these fields to know that those are avenues that they could really fall in love with. You know, you inspire us every single time you come on. How are you inspiring girls and women every day when you're out there? I try to. I try to be a role model you and lead are. by example. But I also say, you know, like I'm unapologetically female, as I like to say it. And, you know, there's a stigma. I think, you know, if you asked a child to draw a scientist or an engineer, they may typically come up with a, a guy in glasses. And it's like, how do we break that stigma? And how do we break that mold? Even that stigma, right? Yes, like, right? It's a little, of it. when you yeah. think about yeah. it, it's yeah. kind of odd. Yeah. yeah. So I think, you know, just doing what I do on television and doing what I do in technology, but also, it's I'm adamant about saying to girls, especially, and boys too, don't forget about our boys. I think it's just as important. When you can show them what they can do in these worlds of technology, they could be amazing meteorologists, they could be building an app, they could be working and creating a rocket. Don't tell them to go into computers and technology. Show them what they can be building and what they can be creating. And what they're and interested in of. and how science is yes. part of that. And get them exposure to that. I think it's being hands-on and getting, and also understanding what they don't like. I think that was one of the challenges in my world in technology. It's like, these are there's so many verticals in the computing yeah. world. What don't you like? Exploring and gets hands-on. And as much as you don't, as much as you do, find out and figure it out. And Science is hard, it's challenging, there's a lot of math involved. Yes. How did you get past some of these obstacles? I think getting hands-on, again, I think is, yes. was so key in finding out what I did and didn't like. I just keep going back to that notion. Were of, you a question asker? I mean, I literally spent all my math and science classes, I think I used up every office hour available <laughs> of my professors. I wasn't a good test taker. And I think that was intimidating because I'm not somebody that, like, I, I think I get overwhelmed and I, it, it gives me anxiety, but I am good hands-on. And I think that was a big game changer for me, especially in school when it came to building the computers. I like that. But when it came to standardized testing, which I think sometimes in education, we focus too much on, I think we have to differentiate with kids in the classroom, yeah, which it yeah. starts at a fundamental level. Yeah. Fantastic, Katie. Katie. I mean, Yay, you're spot on. Always. always. Thank you. So good Thank to have you. you. Thanks for having yeah, me. Yeah, and love, love you your sweater. <laughs> She's always bring something weather <laughs> yes, weather related for us does. here.